Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the Duskmorn preview event, so thanks again to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at a white, black and green, or Abzan colored saddle survivor deck, as we're using a lot of cards with a new survival mechanic, looking at Kona, a rescue beastie. This 4 mana for 3 says at the beginning of your second main phase, if Kona is tapped, we may put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield. So that includes creatures, but also enchantments and artifacts, so Kona is kind of an Elvish Piper-like ability that we can enable in various ways without needing Kona to attack necessarily, and those include some of the mounts such as Caustic Bronco, which can saddle three, so we can tap Kona to help saddle the Bronco, and then Bronco now gets to attack, and if it reveals an expensive card the opponent will lose that much life, so that's also quite synergistic since we naturally want some expensive cards in the deck to cheat into play with Kona, which will then also work quite well with the Bronco. And then a Seraphic Steed is also perfect here. Saddle 4, Kona has 4 power, so we can enable the Steed and start making Angel tokens as well. And then we can also tap Kona with vehicles, such as the Hover Ship, another new card here, a 2-2 flyer with crew 1, and when it enters it exiles up to 1, a target creature with toughness, 5 or less. And then when the Hover Ship leaves, if the opponent doesn't get their creature back, instead they get to manifest a dread, so I'll get a 2-2 creature essentially. So the Hover Ship's also just a decent card by itself, but also synergistic very well in this archetype. And then a Relic of Legends is another way we can potentially tap our legendary creatures to make mana, which can help us empty our hand, but it can also help enable Kona. So a turn 3 Relic of Legends into a turn 4 Kona lets us immediately tap it, and then best case scenario, we could maybe cheat a Volgavoth Terror Eater onto the battlefield. This 9 mana 9-9 nine nine flying a lifelink ward makes the opponent sacrifice 3 non-land permanents if they want to target it, and if a card we didn't control would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, so if they cast a spell or a creature dies, we get to exile it instead, and during our turn we may play cards exiled with Valgavoth by paying a life instead of paying their mana cost. So Valgavoth is clearly the most powerful card we can cheat into play, but we also have the prototype creatures, Steel Seraph and Flesh Gorger, which can be played for 3 mana, so they can still help saddle the Bronco for instance, and then especially Steel Seraph giving our creatures flying is perfect for the Bronco to keep attacking to enable its ability, can also help Kona attack with flying to get past opposing blockers, and still enable the survival ability, and then both Flesh Gorger and Steel Seraph are nice to cheat into play as a 7-5 or a 5-4. And then we've got two copies of a rip, a Spawn Hunter, which also has a survival mechanic. This time we get to look at the top X cards of our library, where X is a rip's power, and put any number of creature and or vehicle cards with different powers from among them into our hand. So that can also help find Kona if we don't have one already, or maybe find Volgavoth, and we can maybe find multiple creatures at once. So this is another card we actively want to be tapping down with our various effects. Same with Wily Duke, which as a 4-2 with Vigilance is usually pretty tricky to tap down, and whenever we do, we get to gain a life and draw a card, but now with our uh, various mount creatures, especially Seraphic Steed, into Wily Duke is a great curve, as we can saddle four and start making angel tokens on turn three already, and then we still have the relic and hover ship to help tap down Wily Duke. And then Virtue of Persistence can be played as a 2-mana removal spell, but also powerful 7-mana enchantment we might be able to cheat and play with Kona, so there's a little bit more synergy there as well. And then Cut Down to round out the deck, just to give us a bit of cheap interaction, can also come in handy. And then the mana base is mostly fast lands and pain lands, since we want the early game to be as smooth as possible. I'm not playing the new Verge lands from Duskmorn, since those play better if we have cards like Fabled Passage, lots of basics, and lots of Surveil lands, which have multiple basic land types for the to produce both colors. We do still have two back streets, but then as I've said, mostly pain lands and fast lands, and then a couple basics in case we need to search them up, and so we have a few more untapped lands on turn four, otherwise our lands are often going to be entering tapped since we have so many of the fast lands as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a solid hand. Bronco into Wily Duke, and then Rip on four. Could be a beautiful sequence, assuming Bronco survives. If we lose Bronco, our hand looks a lot less exciting, since we're lacking a way to tap our creatures. Opponent on an artifact deck with Enigma Jewel. And now a Seraphic Steed might be better over Bronco, as we can immediately saddle it on three. And now we've got a bit of redundancy in case they answer our two drop. So yeah. This is our dream curve. 
opponent does get to block the steep, but we'll still get to make our angel token. And then we're hoping to draw a land to play Kona next turn, cheat in Flash Gorger. We get a redraw by tapping Wily Duke as well, as our opponent taps Rona to draw. Overlords in Graveyards, and our opponent can immediately reanimate it, thanks to the extra mana from Enigma Jewel, which pays for abilities. So now our opponent's got a 5-5 Overlord on the battlefield. Found a land, perfect. So now we can play Kona. And then can tap Kona and Wily Duke if we'd like, just to draw a card and get in with our flyer. Don't think Steed wants to attack just yet. And how about a free Flesh Gorger? And then next turn we can maybe go for a rip and start finding more creatures with that as well. So we've had pretty much an ideal curve. Flesh Gorger could have been something a little bit more impactful, I suppose, but still can't complain. Our opponent also had a good draw with Enigma Jewel, Rona, and then an Overlord. And we see Volgavoth in their graveyard as well, so they might have ways to reanimate that as we see Faithful in hand. So do we want to trade? Not really. Our opponent can play Valgavoth's Faithful and immediately sacrifice it thanks to the Enigma Jewel. So they'll have a 9-9 Valgavoth on the battlefield. Flesh Gorger can still attack past it, but yeah, long term it's still kind of a problem. So yeah, there's Valgavoth. And an Omen Hawker can also pay 2 mana for abilities. So we can kind of see the synergies there. And our opponent can potentially double block the Flesh Gorger after all. So what's my hope? That we draw removal spell for Hawker so Flesh Gorger can attack past Valgavoth, and that we maybe find something else exciting with Kona to put in play. Yeah, that's asking a lot. Step one might be to play Rip. Tap all three. See what we draw. Another Kona. And Relic of Legends. Doesn't seem all that needed here. Opponent gets it with Valgavoth. And then first resolve rip. Which can put a Steel Surf into play. Although is it going to be enough to beat the 9-9 flyer with lifelink? If we can force them to keep it back on defense, it allows us to maybe build up our board some more. But they might have other things they can reanimate in the meantime. Overlord attacks. Valgavoth stays back on defense. And our opponent can get back Valgavoth. Goes for another Faithful, of course. So, yeah, that combination's pretty powerful. If I trade, our opponent just gets back the Overlord once again. So I think I'll take it. If we find a hover ship, we can exile the Overlord, so we don't need to keep dealing with it. Now the Elite. Another discard outlet, basically. Similar to Rona. And also another legendary creature to combine with a Relic of Legends, perhaps. Opponent's got the Soul Cauldron, which also pairs well with uh, Faithful's ability. So we're starting to see more of the synergies here. Okay, so what's our plan? Just keep tapping our stuff for value. Can deploy a Bronco as well. Still don't have a great attack. I guess Flash Gorger can gain Flying to attack past Valgavoth, so that's decent. So we can certainly try that. And then still want to tap my stuff. Get some more triggers. Finding a couple more creatures. Although we already have all our legends in play. 
Just gonna try and go as wide as possible. To potentially set up an all-out attack next turn. Especially if they decide to finally send in Valgavoth. Don't know if there's an infinite combo they can set up with Cauldron. Cards like Omen Hawker. Training Grounds, another way to discount activated abilities. And our opponent finally sends in Valgavoth. So they're back up to 17. And they can have a Valgavoth back on defense by reanimating it here. But no. Opponent just passes. So, yeah, now we might want to set up our all out attack. Can saddle a creature with Wily Duke, play another Wily Duke, saddle a different creature. Can do the same with Kona. Just to spend our mana here. So let's see, this one's already saddled. And then can saddle Seraphic Steed. And play another Kona. To saddle the other one. Alright. And then set up an attack. Still gonna fly the Flash Gorger to connect for the most damage. And see what happens. So we get a bunch of triggers from Bronco. Revealing a 6 damage Steel Seraph and a 1 damage cut down. And uh, looks like that'll do it. Awesome. So yeah, still a close one here against the Volgavoth Reanimator. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a Keeper. Got the early removal spell. Bronco, and then turn 4 we can tap Rip to saddle Bronco and trigger the ability. As we draw Rune Valgavoth after our opponent surveils one into the graveyard. A Twitching Doll is next. Alright, I think uh, Flash Gorger to saddle Bronco still makes sense. Even though taking out the doll would also be okay. Opponent could accept the trade, but now with Seraphic Steed we have another way to maybe tap our creatures. And then if we don't draw line 4, I can still go Steed plus Cutdown. And our opponent with a beastie. Alright, so no lands means we're probably gonna stick to the steed plan and then cut down the twitching doll. We'll add creature and artifact to the graveyard for delirium purposes. So we do have to watch out that the BC doesn't all of a sudden get to block here if our opponent were to add instance as a type. But the only relevant instant, I guess, would be cut down, which takes Bronco out regardless. So I don't want to reveal the steed beforehand, otherwise I would cut down steed and ambush the Bronco. Alright, so now we'll play steed second main. And then next turn we can saddle the steed by tapping Rip and find more action. And then if Rip finds Kona, we can cheat in Valgavoth. Opponent did enable Delirium now by milling an enchantment. And Cruelty, a way to reanimate Valgavoth, which is already conveniently in the graveyard. So, yeah, they might have another Cruelty in hand to cast next turn. Opponent now with Winter. So that's going to draw both players additional cards, but our maximum hand size is reduced. Okay, so what's our plan? Still go for Rip. And then Steed doesn't have to attack necessarily. Could just send in... Flash Gorger, have them double block it. Am 
might be worth it to actually get in with Flash Gorger and Seraphic Steed. That way, they either double lock Flash Gorger or block Steed for free, and we'll get our token. And then Rip will trigger. Still hoping for Kona. Found another Volgovoth instead. And pass a turn. And then I guess we have to discard two cards to hand size since opponent's got four card types. And uh, probably don't need all Valgavoths. And uh, at this point, maybe Bronco can go. Now we get to draw two cards as well. And a Hatch Shredder can also fill the graveyard. Volgovoth's Lair, an enchantment land that enters tapped with Hexproof. So it can also be both land and enchantment for delirium purposes. Alright, so did not find Kona, which is what we really want here. But we can still keep getting in. I guess with Flash Gorger, opponent can crew Shredder and double block it profitably. So that's not the best. Our opponent is at 11, so can also try to maybe take them out with Bronco triggers. So maybe that's the plan, get in with Bronco and Angel Token Flesh Gorger. What if I attack with the Rip? Then our opponent just blocks it with the Shredder. So we'll try this. This does not have reach. Just double checking. Bronco just revealing a land, so no additional damage. And our opponent goes for the double block, so we get to take out the Beastie. Still get in for five. Although we do have to be prepared for our opponent reanimating Volgavoth next turn. We just want to add more creatures to the board. Still no Kona. And there's the Cruelty as we suspected. Starting from Chapter 3 to reanimate Valgavoth. Could also steal our copy. So they maybe keep more creatures in their graveyard for Delirium. And get to untap. So we could try a Hail Mary with Bronco attacks. If we reveal 6 mana value total, we just win the game before our opponent gains 9. This might be my best hope. Or we can still try and play a longer game where we try and get our own Valgavoth on the battlefields if we finally find a Kona. Yeah, I think an all-out attack is somewhat reasonable here. So we can play another Steed. And then saddle two Broncos. If I draw into like a cutdown, I can also kill my own Bronco if they try and block with Valgavoth to deny the life gain. So that's another relevant interaction and a reason maybe not to attack with my 3-3, which I cannot cut down at instant speed. And then I guess I may as well surveil to try and set up my top deck. Maybe should have started there. So Kona is 4 damage. All right, let's see if we get there. So I need a two mana card to win the game. And we got there, double Kona. So even though it didn't actually show up in time, it still won us the game technically. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Missing green mana. Also no real way to easily tap my creatures. So I'll take a mulligan. Once again, missing green, but we do have Relic to fix my colors, and if we do find green on turn 2, curving Steed into Wily Duke is pretty strong. So I'll keep, and Valgavoth has to go. Do get to Surveil, and yeah, Brushland will keep. So our curve might work out. Relic also very good with Wily Duke, but may as well 
saddle the steed. Opponent with a Hall Creeper, so might be an Aura deck. And Rip is potentially a reason to play Relic here, so next turn we can play Rip and immediately tap it. But Wily Duke also draws us more cards. And now we've got the untapped lands to play Rip and once again saddle the Steed. And then it's not going to take long to find Kona, which can help us out as well. Our opponent may be looking to suit up the unblockable Hall Creeper. For now gets in for one. And Entity Tracker can start drawing. Can stick to the plan here, play Rip, and then tap it to saddle the Steed, even if we don't attack with it. Could also tap Wily Duke just to draw a card if we don't want to trade. Although I think at this point it's reasonable to just attack all out, make another Angel, and then they get the choice of trading for Wily Duke or ambushing the Steed. Opponent takes it. And find Kona. As well as Valgavoth. So next turn we could play Kona and then cheat Valgavoth into play. And then may as well draw an extra card here. So we're going off. Hall Creeper attacks. Turns into another Entity Tracker. So that's a pretty sweet combo. Ethereal Armor to suit it up. And a Sheltered by Ghosts can give it lifelink and exile one of our creatures. If they get rid of the Steed, I wouldn't be able to play Kona and immediately tap it. Although Relic of Legends should still work since we have some legendaries that can also tap for mana. And a second Ethereal Armor. Alright, that's getting quite large now. And it's not like our deck has a wealth of removal. So, yeah, stick to the plan, I think. Play Relic. Play Kona. Tapping. A rip. And Wily. Drawing a card. And then we can still tap Kona. Just to have it tapped, send in our flyers. And cheat Valgavoth onto the battlefields in addition to triggering Rip. And finds another Rip. All right, let's see if our opponent can deal 22 damage here. It's not impossible. It's going to be a glimmer for starters. And another Hall Creeper, that's fine. They could still play another removal spell here, the Sheltered by Ghosts. Although if they target Valgavoth, they will have to sacrifice three permanents. And it's going to be another Ethereal Armor instead. Yeah, goes up to a 21-21. Luckily not a 22-22, otherwise we would have to chump with Valgavoth. Although I guess they still have a mana left. So we could see another Aura, which now also gets a discount from the Glimmer. So I think our opponent may have turned this around. Another Hall Creeper. Tracker now at 24-24. Keeps drawing and can attack. Having us chump with Valgavoth feels bad. But don't have a choice. Now we can put a Virtue of Persistence in play to get it back, but a long term that doesn't win us the game. And yeah, we don't have Go for the Throat as removal in this build. Virtue of Persistence sadly doesn't deal with a 24 24. So, can uh, try to fly over with some of our creatures using Steel Seraph, although that's not quite going to be enough.
So what's our plan? I guess just attack with what we have. Maybe don't want to put Conine Harm's Way so I can put in the Virtue. Or we can just cast a Virtue tapping Kona, put in another Steel Seraph. And not go for the Enchantment half. Removing the Entity Tracker here. Can give a rip a lifelink. Damage happens. Get some more triggers. Rip misses, but we can still put in a Steel Seraph. And pass a turn. Wily could still draw if we tap it with a Relic of Legends, but this tracker is only going to get bigger and eventually it'll get us. Scavenger for more plus one counters. And Enduring Innocence can draw even more cards now too. Our opponent's going to start diversifying in case we did have an answer to the Entity Tracker perhaps. They could also be playing the aura that can give hex proof at instant speed, which they might start to keep up. It's gonna be another entity tracker instead. Draws a card. And we'll probably have to throw Bronco under the bus. If we had instant speed removal, we could have taken out our own creature after blocking to prevent our opponent from gaining life. But sadly we don't. I guess I could still draw into a cutdown, I suppose. So, go full control. Tap Wily, making black. And hope to draw a cutdown. That's not a cutdown. So now the Hall Creepers could turn into more Entity Trackers. Our opponent has to be careful that they don't deck themselves. So they're just gonna draw. Wow, there's a cut down, a draw step late. So if we actually prevented the 27 life gain, we might have had a shot to win with our flyers here. That's a shame. I guess we can try to set that up once again. Although I'll need to draw another small creature I can cut down in the first place. But uh, Rip might find one. So for now, maybe cast a Virtue of Persistence. Tapping some of my legends that don't want to attack. Wily could be one of them. Find another Steel Seraph, which I can also cheat into play. So I can give these flying. But yeah, I'm not going to have the mana to both play another small creature and cut it down. So this is still a race we're not really winning. Probably gonna leave an angel back to block. Although I'm putting myself dead to another removal spell, which they're somewhat likely to have at this point. So get a few more triggers. And find a hover ship. Doesn't deal with a larger entity tracker. So maybe for now it's another steel seraph. And pass. A mirror room can copy a creature. Copies entity tracker. But I imagine now if they find more ethereal armors, they're gonna put them on the hall creepers since those are unblockable. And ghostly dancers can make a bunch of flyers as well. And we'll fully unlock the Fractured Realm. So now triggers will happen twice. And yeah, things are getting out of hand. But yeah, only 18 cards left, so that's our win condition now, our opponent drawing from an empty library. Oh, 
We're not gonna deal 54 damage. Our opponent making more ghostly dancers. So hover ship can deal with one of them. And what do we want to reanimate here? Volgavoth might be the pick. Is there anything better? Yeah, let's go with Volgavoth. And then step one might be hover ship. Deal with the dancers. And can cut down a 3-1 to get past it. Go to attackers. If Kona attacks, it's just going to get blocked by Spirit. But uh, can maybe give Rip flying. So then if they double block, I can cut down. And then Wily Duke doesn't really want to trade. So I guess we can give Rip a lifelink as well. And give a 5-4 Steel Seraph a lifelink. And then I need to make sure to tap Kona if I want to use the ability. So we might use the cut down by tapping Kona. And maybe 3-3 three, three Steel Seraph also doesn't want to trade. Something along these lines. Yeah, the attack doesn't really matter since our opponent's got infinite life. But the uh, life link helps and we mainly just want to trigger a rip. Opponent does go for the double block. Cut down one of them. And again, should have used Kona here for mana. Rip and Kona trigger. Finding a Flesh Gorger. And do we want to do anything else? Could tap Wily Duke to draw, maybe find something else useful. I guess could play a replacement to rip just to have it back as a blocker. And pass the turn. So the game goes on. Scavenger will give them more triggers. 16 cards left. Ethereal Armor now on the flyer. Could always crew the hover ship. Do jump with that instead. As the scavenger triggers go crazy. So 10 cards remaining. Our opponent needs to choose their enchantments wisely, but they might be getting to a point where they're not going to play anything else out and hope to win with what they have in play, which could also work out. Porcelain Gallery, alright, well that's probably going to do it now. So all their creatures are enormous. More triggers happen. And as long as they're not drawing 10 cards, they should get there. But yeah, opponent's down to 4 cards, so... Still got kind of close. Now we just need to chump as much as possible. Go to blockers, can gain a little bit of life too. I guess our opponent's not quite dying next turn, so they could still attack me a second time 
and that's probably gonna be good enough. Do need to block the first strikers and then block the non-first strikers with my life linkers. This is kind of the best I can do, but uh, pretty sure we still die. Opponent does manifest Dread, which actually kind of mills them too in a way. So now there's two cards left. But still plenty for lethal. Well, still a fun game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got potential. Hovership can help us tap Kona, put in Valgavoth. So that's our plan. And then Wily Duke also plays well with the Hovership. A rip, another good card, and a Relic of Legends that might be even better than Hovership if there's no creature to remove. And gives us access to 4 mana. Opponent also with a Relic of Legends, so some sort of a legendary deck as we also see Plaza of Heroes. And uh, yeah, I think we stick to the plan. Play Relic. Opponent might have their own Kona gonna be a Joda instead. Yeah, that one's quite scary. And Hovership does not take care of it. It's a 6-6, six, six, so just large enough. But uh, yeah, we'll have to settle for a free Volgavoth. And then next turn we can deploy more stuff out to draw more cards. And he joins up. Pretty good with Joda. Finds Skrelv. So they can take out Kona. And Honest Rutstein also triggers. Finding Inti. So Joda's getting larger than Valgavoth here. At least they can't keep double Inti. So we get to steal one of them. And I'll take 9. Might be a bit more here with Inti's trigger. And we see Sigarda as well. Alright, so take 10. We can at least play Hovership to deal with Skrelv as the only creature that's small enough. And then get an attack in. And then we want to try and produce as many blockers as possible. So maybe it's not a turn for another Kona. This can name human, I guess. Uh, play Hovership on Skrelv. So in that case, Wily Duke might be the preferred play. That way I can also crew the Hovership to chump with if needed. Although, never mind, I guess Inti we get to play by paying life. So that seems worthwhile. Attack. Can discard a duplicate. And Seraphic Steed I could still play by tapping my two legends with a relic. Yeah, that seems worthwhile. I'll gain a life off uh, Wily Duke as well. And then Steed is happy to chump if needed. Can chump with a hovership. And then Valgavoth can maybe cross the finish line. Opponent's got another Joda, so gets a bunch more triggers. And we'll see what they get. Opponent is playing Kona. Don't know if their curve goes quite as high as Valgavoth. But still very good with Relic of Legends. Opponent goes to attackers. They get to trigger Inti for Trample. But then we just need to chump their largest creature to survive. And that should do it. Still close. But yeah, getting to put in a Volgavoth with Kona. Seems to have gotten the job done. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. 
this hand's a little clunky, so we'll have to mulligan, I'm afraid. This is a bit better. So, cut down. I wouldn't be able to play turn one if we play the back streets, so maybe I just keep the two drops to pair with Steel Seraph. And planes I don't really need. So we're looking at Bronco into Steel Seraph. Opponent on an enchantment deck with a new scavenger. Could still cut it down. I think I prefer getting the Bronco going. And then Valgavoth's Lair triggers Eerie. And Ethereal Armor. So out of range from cutdown now. But we don't mind a race. So play Steel Seraph to saddle the Bronco. Can go for lifelink this time. And reveal to Wily Duke, so that's three more damage. Next turn we could saddle the Bronco tapping Wily. Still maybe have a cutdown available. As we take seven. And our opponent might have a protection spell up to protect the scavenger. Relic of Legends isn't bad either. I think I still prefer Wily. Draw a card. My draw tap plant we want to play. Valgavoth could be good once we find Kona. And then go to attackers. Do we suspect any flash creatures here? Not really. So I'll give Steel Seraph itself lifelink. That opponent does have the removal spell, nowhere to run. Takes out the Bronco. And grows a scavenger, but we can at least gain our three life. So yeah, had they removed the Bronco in response to me casting Wily, I would not have been able to tap it so easily. And now we've got more ways to keep tapping our creatures if needed. Although we might take 14 damage here. Pixie can pick up their removal spell. And uh, replay it to take out Steel Seraph or Wily. And trigger the scavenger once again. So that happens. Take 10. And then. Still worth it to try and cut down the Pixie. Alright, go another draw. Although I'm a little bit short on mana to Relic and Kona here, which would then let me put in a Volgavoth, although it's probably a chum blocking Volgavoth, so it's not incredibly helpful. So instead, the play might be attack with Wily. Play Relic, play Steed. Steed can chump, and we can tap Wily to draw as well. And then keep the Kona surprise for next turn. Put him now with Victor. So let's them surveil, discard cards. Or potentially reanimate a creature. And a Fear of Lost Teeth. Another enchantment creature triggering Eerie. So we'll stick to the plan, I think. So we can cheat in Valgavoth. Can we do anything else? So we'd have to play Kona first. Although I want to avoid the situation where I'm forced to jump with Valgavoth. I think I still try this. And then we can maybe wait to see how our opponent reacts before we decide what to tap, if anything. This is going to be a jump. So in that case, just tap Kona. Do cheat in Valgavoth. 
and keep Wily as a blocker. I guess never mind, they can finish off Wily with uh, Fear of Lost Teeth. So now I could be in a bit of trouble actually. Hadn't considered the one extra damage. Does the untapped lanes help? I guess it does somewhat. Since we can put in Volgavoth and then tap Valgavoth to play Wily Duke. Which can then trump instead of Valgavoth having to trump. But we are dead to another removal spell. Bandit's talent is fine. We get a free scavenger off surveil and a sheltered by ghosts. I'm afraid that'll do it here. So they did have the other removal spell. They can clear Wily. I can draw a response but still take lethal. So it was a close one. Had we maybe started with cut down on scavenger, this game might have looked a lot different and maybe would have worked out better for us. But uh, yeah, good to cheat in Valgavolt. Sadly, our opponent had a 12-12 first strike, so we never really got to take advantage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our hand? No real synergy. Can definitely mulligan. This time we've got Bronco, which is pretty good with Steel Seraph, even if we aren't comboing anything into play. Still gotta give it a try. And then probably hang on to the Virtue, which is a bit more versatile. And still good to cheat in play if we top deck Kona. Opponent red black. Hopefully Bronco gets to attack for a turn. Right, Seraphic Steed. I cannot quite saddle with uh, Steel Seraph, so still just gonna play the Seraph now. And then we might see removal on Bronco. And go for the throats. At least Steel Seraph can survive. Go for the throats. Opponent now with a Screaming Nemesis. We can outrace it with Steel Seraph just fine. And we can take it out with Virtue of Persistence. So that seems like a fine pairing. Can uh, attack, gaining a life. And as long as we don't damage the Nemesis, it doesn't uh, prevent us from gaining a life. So we had a decent curve out. Kona would still be a good top deck since we can saddle the Steed and then put a Steel Seraph in play for free. As our opponent plays another Screaming Nemesis, now on defense. Alright, so play another Steel Seraph. Can fly the Steed, or we can saddle the Steed, which is maybe better long term. Go to attackers, get some keywords, vigilance and flying. And get the extra angel token. And that will do it. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our Abzan saddle deck in action. And Kona definitely has a lot of potential in this archetype, where we naturally have lots of ways to tap it, as well as the prototype creatures, which are good to play by themselves to help your uh, creatures keep attacking, but they're also nice to cheat into play or to reveal with a Bronco, so there's a lot of overlap in the various synergies. Could see modifying the top end of the deck a little bit more, maybe we want more creatures to try and cheat and play with Kona, although that can make our draws a lot clunkier, as we'll maybe be stuck with cards we cannot cast, so there's still maybe ways to mess around 
around with the deck and maybe try out some other options, but so far I've been pretty happy with it. Still won't quite be competitive enough to keep up on the rank ladder, I'm afraid, since it's not necessarily the best position deck to face some of the more aggressive decks in the format, as well as the more controlling decks, which can kind of sweep up all of our creatures, even if we can put a lot of them in play for free. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.